From the early 1930s, the dark shadows of Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party had begun creeping all over Europe. Racial supremacy and Hitler's megalomania ushered in the darkest period in human history. For millions of Jews, time had begun to run out. The Jewish population faced a growing threat and brutal treatment from the Nazi regime, which had established laws that took away their civil rights and destroyed their livelihood. Stripping them from human and civil rights was the first step that eventually led to the Holocaust, which became the symbol of the moral collapse of the perpetrators of the most brutal war in human history. By 1937, Jews residing in Germany had found conditions unbearable. Not only had many of them been forced out of their jobs and businesses, but racist violence and brutality had become real. Many Jews resorted to seeking refuge in other countries, writing letters to embassies and consulates, as well as to world leaders, asking them to open their country's doors. Hundreds of those letters reached the United States and the Commonwealth Government of the Philippines, a remote island nation far from Nazi Germany. But President Manuel L. Quezon was, in fact, no stranger to the terror in Europe. On a visit to Berlin in 1937, he had personally witnessed a Nazi parade where Hitler's troops celebrated what they regarded was their racial supremacy and exhibited their racist agenda against the Jews. Quezon would have easily imagined how those feelings of hatred would soon turn into violence and brutality. The plight of the Jews who were asking for refuge quickly moved him, along with his colleagues and friends, to offer asylum to the Jews. But there were many obstacles. At the time, the Philippines was still under the American Commonwealth, though it had been promised independence by the U.S. government by the year 1946. This made accepting the fleeing Jews a complicated matter. The 1917 U.S. Immigration Act prevented aliens from entering the United States without financial support. This meant that people who arrived on U.S. soil could not be public charges that would be dependent on the U.S. government to provide for them. To add to that, tight immigration quotas allowed very few foreigners to settle in America, despite the crisis that faced millions of Jews in Europe. But Kenzin knew it would be more than a simple political crisis. It would be a humanitarian one, and of global proportions. For many politicians in America, and in most of the rest of the world, the idea of welcoming hundreds of thousands of Jews onto their soil was not so easy to accept. Kenzin wrote, While our foreign relations are still under the control and supervision of the government of the United States, we are faced from time to time with questions affecting nationals of other countries, such as that of political refugees seeking admission into our shores. Our government has shown every desire to do everything possible for these unfortunate people who are without a home and without a country. We are glad to extend to them our helping hand to an extent compatible with the interests of our people. Kezon was not Jewish and Germany was almost 10,000 kilometers from Manila, halfway around the world. But to him, saving the Jews was a matter of instinct. It was simply the right thing to do. It took a combination of legal maneuvering, financial aid, and human conviction to admit hundreds of Jews into the Philippines. Soon, ships from Europe docked at the Manila Pier, and the arriving Jews given valuable support by the local Jewish community and the government. They entered society as professionals and business owners, as visitors made welcome in a land so unfamiliar to them in the beginning. But this was only the beginning too for Kezon. Along with the Frieder brothers, who were among the leaders of the Jewish community in the Philippines, he continued to find ways to admit more Jews into the country. At one point, even offering his own property in Marikina to serve as a home for the country's growing Jewish population. By the end of 1941, Quezon's compassion and the compassion of Filipino people had rescued about 1,300 Jews from the hands of the Nazis. In taking refuge in Manila, they had escaped the terrible fate that awaited those left behind the horrifying Holocaust that ended the lives of more than six million Jews throughout the Second World War. 
Today, a grand monument in the city of Rijon Lazion, south of Tel Aviv, Israel, commemorates the efforts of President Quezon and the Filipino people and celebrates a great moment of shared humanity. It is called Open Doors, and it reminds the world of the time when the Jewish people desperately sought a beacon of hope at one of the darkest times in history. Thanks to Manuel El Quezon, whose act of generosity has been recognized by the world as a great victory over the greatest moral collapse in history. The Jews found that beacon, shining from the open hearts of the Filipinos on the other side of the world.